Hi students, welcome to KTU Web. Today we are going to deal with this question. Okay, let's dive into this. Design a double riveted but join with equal width of cover plate to join two plates with thickness 10 mm. The allowable stresses for the material is given as for plate material intention sigma t equal to 80 megapascal for rivet material in compression sigma c equal to 120 megapascal for rivet material in shear tau is equal to 60 megapascal okay as same as my previous video i'm going to use k mahadevan data book you can use your own data book to get these set of equations you'll be getting different equation from different data books and different textbooks however you can solve these kind of question by adopting the same methodology here in this question we have a uh, two set of data one is the stresses that we have 80 megapascal 120 megapascal and 60 megapascal and the thickness t is mentioned as 10 mm so these are the data we have based on these requirement we are going to design the rivet okay let's begin on step one as same as the previous problem we have to fix what type of rivet that we are going to solve okay the type is as mentioned as a double riveted double strap but joint whenever you are solving a problem it's better to have a diagram just like this and it no need to be a, this kind of very detailed one you need at least just a rough sketch before solving any kind of joints when you look at this figure you could get the detail of double riveted double strap but shown here we have two straps upon this butt joint since it is an end to end we have two main plates this is main plate number one this is main plate number two this is the end to end joint and above that we have two strap this is upper strap and this one is a lower bottom one and this is a double riveted double strap means we have two rivet per main plate so when you check on the left side we have rivet number one and rivet number two on main plane that is why it is a double riveted double strap but joint after that we have to find number of rivet with a single shear double shear and total number of rivet per pitch then find total number of rivet per pitch here when you look at this figure if you draw two pitch line we have a half rivet here another half and remaining two halves I hope you remember how we solved previous problems we have half plus half one rivet here and half plus half another rivet here within the pitch length we have two rivets that is n is equal to two then we have to find number of rivet with single shear this is a butt joint when you look at this joint you could identify there is no rivet with the single shear if you take this rivet this have two shear planes one here another here and the next rivet as well we have two shear planes as marked here that means here there is no rivet with a single shear n1 become equal to zero and now we can go for number of rivet with the double shear it is obvious that for double strap but join both the rivet has two shear planes as marked in this figure so n2 is equal to two in this case now we can go for the step Two. In step 2, we will be finding the thickness of plate. Fortunately, we have the thickness T equal to 10 mm. This data is already given in the problem. So we can uh, skip into step 3. In step 3, we have to find the diameter of rivet hole. Hope you remember the diameter of rivet hole can be found by Unwin's formula whenever the thickness of plate is greater than 8 mm. Since we have a 10 mm plate, we will be using Unwin's formula. Unwin's formula is given as D, the diameter hole, is equal to 6.325 rho T. Here in our case, D is equal to 6.325 rho 10 and getting 20 mm then we have to look back to data book for a standard value of rivet hole you have to check with standard value always to reconcile with the industrial requirements 
from data book i got the standard value of time meter as the standard value about 20 is 21 mm this is the standard value and in this step we will do one more thing we can write the time meter of rivet shank or diameter of rivet and it is very easy as you know diameter of rivet d1 is equal to diameter of hole minus 1 mm that is we have to fix rivet in rivet hole and we reduce 1 mm from the diameter of rivet hole so we will be getting the diameter of rivet as 21 minus 1 that is 20 mm remember when i am talking about the rivet diameter i mean the diameter of rivet shank as shown in this figure this is what d1 now we can go for step 4 in step 4 we will be finding the pitch of rivets and hope you remember my previous video in pitch of rivet we have two stages first we find the optimum value of pitch as per our requirement and then after we will find the standard maximum value of rivet and upon comparison we can fix the final design of the pitch length okay let us begin with the first step here we are going to find the optimum pitch the optimum pitch is given by this equation you can also locate this equation in your textbooks or data books upon application of value we will be getting here the value n1 is 0 as indicated in first step and the value of n2 we have 2 so i can omit this term and go for remainings upon solving we will be getting pitch or the optimal pitch is equal to 118.41 mm this is the optimal pitch now we are going to find the maximum pitch as per the indian boiler act standard we have p max is equal to k1 t plus 41 mm and the thickness of plate t already we have 10 mm now we have to find the value of k1 to get the value of k1 you can check with your data book there is a table in which you can find the value of k1 okay let's check with the data book to find the value of k1 first you have to check with the number of rivet per pitch that we found from step one and it is found that number of rivet per pitch as two and here we have two different types first one is lab join another one is but with the straps now you have to check with the number of rivet per pitch two against butt join again when it comes to butt join there is one with a single butt strapped and a double butt strapped in our problem and you know that we have two straps one strap above another strap below so our case is coefficient for double butt strap join so when you take this value you will be getting 3.5 zero that is we have the value of k1 as 3.5 if it is 3.5 we can find p max as 3.5 into thickness 10 mm plus 41 and you will be getting this value as 76 mm here is the important thing in previous problem it was okay with uh, standard pitch we got the lower than standard pitch value but here in this problem the situation is pretty much different according to our calculation we got p as 118.41 mm but as per standard the pitch should not greater than 76 mm okay now what we are going to do here is if you adopt a pitch higher than the standard value it is expecting a leakage and it will not account the boiler standard or any other rivet standard in the country so we are going to fix 76 mm as the pitch of this joint and you have to remember this situation you have to check p max all the time if the value of p max is greater than that of what you calculated you can choose it and if the value of p max is less than that of what you calculate you have to choose the value of p max not the value on which you calculated that means here we are going to fix the pitch of rivet as 
Pmax. Now we can go for the step 5. In step 5, we are going to find the transverse pitch or the distance between the rows of rivet. This is what we denote it as PT in my diagram. That is the distance between two gauge lines. There is standard equation where you can use to find PT. And I am going to use that equation here. PT is greater than or equal to 2 times of rivet diameter. That means PT is equal to 2 into 21 that we found in previous step. That is PT we can fix tax 42 mm. Let's go for another step that we don't have in previous problem in lab joint. In case of butt joint, you have to find the thickness of straps. In step 6, we are going to find the thickness of strap. Here we have two strap. One is inner another one is on outer edge and both the straps has the same thickness and I am going to use a standard value for that from data book I am getting this relationship you can also use this the strap thickness is equal to 0 0.625 times of the main plate thickness upon solving you will get this as 6.25 mm now we can go for step 7. In step 7, we have to find the margin of riveted joint. And it is given as margin M is equal to 1.5 times of rivet hole diameter. That is M is equal to 1.5 into 21. And that is equal to 31.5 mm. Then this is the last step and very important here in step 8. We are going to find the efficiency of riveted joint. You know that the efficiency of rivet joint is the least among the three efficiencies. That is the tearing efficiency and crushing efficiency and the shearing efficiency. That means we have to find all these three efficiencies and find out which one has very low value. That is eta is equal to least among tearing efficiency, shearing efficiency and crushing efficiency okay let us begin with the tearing efficiency of rivet tearing efficiency is given as pitch minus diameter of rivet hole divided by pitch and it's easy to find we have 76 minus 21 divided by 76 you will be getting eta t as 0 0.7264 Upon converting that into percentage, you have to multiply this value with 100 and eta t in percentage, you can write as 72.64 percentage. Okay, we got the first efficiency as 72.64. Now we can go for the second efficiency, what we called it as the shearing efficiency. The standard equation will be available with your data book to find shearing efficiency. The shearing efficiency is given as. I did a video on how to derive this kind of efficiency equation. Check my previous videos regarding riveted joint and efficiency calculation. Upon substitution of value, you will be getting eta s as. Here we don't have any number of rivet with single shear and one becomes zero and I am going to put the remaining values. And now we can give it as in terms of percentage that is 1.282 into 100. Now we got a pretty much great percentage here. It as is equal to 128.2 percentage. Don't be confused, it is okay that you are getting a percentage higher than under percentage because that is the peculiarity of that material that we are using. We can go for crushing efficiency eta c. Eta c is equal to, I am using the standard equation as upon applying those values, upon solving getting 0 0.8290. That means in percentage, we can write 82.90 percentage. Okay, that is the crushing efficiency of this joint. Now we have to check with these three efficiencies. The first one is the crushing efficiency 82.90 and the shearing efficiency is very big 128.2 
and the tearing efficiency is 72.64 and it is obvious that lowest one is eta t 72.64 now we are going to fix that lowest value as the efficiency of this particular joint this is the final efficiency of the rivet joint and that's it i hope you understood this problem i'm requesting you to check my previous video on the same kind of problem with a different set of parameters and hope you enjoy this i will be coming up with a new videos as always thank you thank you for watching